took a quick peek at clipping masks in my beginning class, and we used them more extensively in my Holly Shop workshop, like this example here, where we used clipping masks to crop photos for use in a layout. And masking is an important technique for being able to crop photos or artwork in Illustrator. And if you're used to doing this in Photoshop, probably the main difference here in Illustrator is that you can apply a mask directly to a photo or object. You don't have to apply it to a particular layer. And here's a peek at the photo at its original size. And then here it is with the clipping mask applied again. And once you create a clipping mask, your photo and its masking shape become a group and they will stick together. You can move them around on the artboard. You can drag them to another layer, whatever you like, just like any other group. So creating a clipping mask is actually very easy. Here I have a photo and a circle that I want to use as my masking shape. And I can drag the circle on top of my photo. And this is the main rule with clipping masks. The shape must be on top of the photo or the art you're masking. So the mask shape goes on top and select both things and then go up to the object menu and then down to clipping mask, make. And now my photo is masked. And in outline mode, I can see the boundaries of my original photo here and the circle path that's masking the photo. And if I select this circle and I can only select it by clicking on the path edge because there's no fill. And if I look over in the color panel, I can see that this shape now has no fill and no stroke. So when you create a clipping mask, the masking shape loses its former color. It's now an empty shape. Okay, now Command or Control Y again. Another thing to notice, I'll deselect by clicking the artboard, and now I'll select my masked photo. This is now a group, and I can look up on the top control bar and see it identified that way. So anything that's masked becomes a group automatically. And if I scale it, everything moves together, just like scaling a group of objects. Now there's a difference in how earlier versions of Illustrator handle clipping masks. I'm in CS5 and CS4 is the same as CS5 in this case, but in version CS3 and earlier, and here we are in CS3 for just a moment, in CS3 you can select your masked group by clicking out here in the area where the photo is not even visible. And so you can imagine this gets frustrating when you have a lot of masks in a document. You never know when you might select something unintentionally. And so CS3 and earlier users may need to do some extra layer organization so you can lock layers to avoid this issue. Okay, so back in CS5 though, Adobe fixed this issue starting with version CS4 and so I can click around here where I know there's some more of the photo and yet I'm not selecting. It's just as it should be. Now we had just created a clipping mask with this photo and circle and to unmask this to release the mask, first select it and then go back up to object, clipping mask, and then release. And notice the shortcuts. This one I have memorized because I use it a lot. It's Command or Control 7 to make a mask. And then to release, just add Option or Alt. So that's Command Option 7 or Control Alt 7 on a PC to release. And so now I just have my photo and that no fill, no stroke masking circle. And so you don't have to use a circle or a plain old square. You can use a more complex shape like this letter A I have here. And this was some type I converted to outlines. This is not an actual font, but it is a compound shape because of this hole in the middle. And so now I'll place it on top of my photo, select them both, and Command or Control 7, and I've made another clipping mask. Okay, so now let's take a look at how to edit this photo inside the clipping mask. Clicking on this with the black arrow gets me the whole masking group as we've already seen but I can switch to my white arrow and now clicking on the photo with the white arrow gets me the photo inside the mask group. And from here, I can just move it around inside the shape. Now, if I wanna scale the photo, I need to switch back to my black arrow, so hit V, and then the bounding box handles will reappear around the photo. And so now I can just go back and forth between moving and scaling. I can even rotate it. And I don't even have to switch back to my white arrow here to move this with a simple, masked photo like this. I just use the white arrow. It's like a key to unlock the door and get inside the mask to the photo. So right now I'm doing what Illustrator refers to as edit contents. I'm editing the contents of this clipping mask. And there are three ways to approach editing a clipping mask group. You can edit the contents, the photo. You can edit the mask, 
that's the A shape, or you can edit the clipping mask as a group, the shape and the photo together. So with a single photo like this, the white arrow is the easy way. But when you have a bunch of objects inside a mask, like this mask here, so here I have a circle creating a mask for one of those texture tracings we made, the spiral texture. So if I take my white arrow to this, not really a good idea. I just selected one of the paths. And you know there are a half a million tiny little shapes in here, so I don't want to go near this with my white arrow. So this is a case where it's helpful to use the Illustrator menu commands, or those same commands as they appear on the top control bar. So we'll start with the menu. I'll select the mask group with my black arrow, and then go up to Object Clipping Mask. And here we have Edit Contents. And now all those little texture paths are selected at once, and I can move the whole texture group around. Okay, and now this is where Hide Edges comes in handy. Remember that from last week. It's Command or Control H, and now I can actually see what I'm doing here without all that path highlighting. So certainly that makes it better for adjusting the color. You can actually see what you're doing. Okay, and now Command or Control H again, and I'm back to the default. Now if I'm done with contents and I want to edit the mask, then just go back up to Object, Clipping Mask, and the command has switched to Edit Mask. And so now I can scale the circle. And these same options are available to you on the control bar. Right here, these two icons, Edit Mask and Edit Contents. And you can see when I flip back and forth between the two, Mask and Contents, the selection changes on the artboard. And if I want to edit the whole group at once, I just deselect, clicking the artboard, and then select my mask group, just like any other group. And now up here, these icons are both darkened to show you they're working together. So we know how to make a clipping mask, and we know how to approach editing the mask and its contents. Let's look at the layers panel so we can see how a clipping mask looks in layers.